Hello, everyone, and welcome to Friday's Live. It's Friday. It's December. How did that happen? And we are joined today by a very special guest, her first appearance on camera. Um, and I'm really excited to introduce you all to little Ava. Oh, she's so cute. I know she has nothing to do with genealogy, but she just happens to be cru cruising around my office this morning. Um, we adopted her on Wednesday, and we're so pleased to welcome her to our family. And she's just, she's three months old, and she's just adorable, and she just purrs. Anyway, she's probably going to be on and off screen as she continues to get used to our house and, and explore. So um, just bear with me as I deal with my new little kitten. Uh, all right. Um, for those of you who have been with us many times before, welcome back. Uh, we appreciate you. And for those of you who are new to Find My Past From Home, we are so excited that you're with us. My name is Jen Baldwin. I'm the research specialist for Find My Past, and I am your host today. Um, and I know that this got posted to Facebook actually pretty late. That's my fault. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to give a shout out to Ellie, who's in comments today. Um, she kind of helped save me there. Um, and I, I just had a little bit of um, tech issues this morning that I was trying to deal with with our IT guy remotely, and that's always tricky. And so I just kind of didn't quite get that on time. Anyway, sorry it was posted so late. Um, and Ellie says she missed the new cat, so she was late. So we'll show off Ava again. Here she is. She's so cute. She is just so cute. She's got the most adorable little face. I don't think she likes being on camera just yet. She'll get used to it. Um, but look at her. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I'm not. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing well. She is going to climb on me this whole hour. I'm sure of it. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus. All right, I got a job to do. Um, it is chilly here as well. I know everybody's kind of chiming in on on the weather. Um, it snowed even a little bit. I noticed. Um, I don't actually even know when that happened last night or this morning, but there's a new little dusting outside in my at my house. Um, not very much just a dusting, but we did get quite a lot last week. So, um, yeah, it's cold in Fife, Anya. Um, it's chilly in Somerset. David says no snow though. So far, so far. Um, very cold in Devon today says Jenny. Matthew's chiming in from Somerset. Oh uh, no, sorry. From Watford. Daphne's in Somerset. Um, Oh, <laughs> um, and Matthew, she's, she's three months. So very, very little still. Um, that's Ava. Yeah. Victoria. Hello. He hello. Hello. Very frosty and cold in Suffolk. Um, Andrew been out for lunch and sightseeing. Sunny, but still frosty. Yeah. Um, Ooh, a new traction engine. Ooh, that sounds cool. Um, Andrew, can you post some pictures? That'd be good. I love, I love it. Um, we're coming in from Vancouver. We've got, oh, hi, Liam. Liam's in Dundee, of course. Um, Kim's with us. Shirley's with us in a frosty but sunny Cambridgeshire. Uh, Janet, nice to see you, Janet, in North Wales. Um, uh, the kitten will pop up now and again. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, cold in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm -hmm. Ooh, negative 60 in, in Calgary this morning, Gordon. Um, I hope it warms up for you, but I'm I'm imagining we're kind of in for it, right? It's going to be a winter, I feel like, out out west this year. Um, I have nothing to base that off of. I just it's, I just feel like it's going to be a winter. Um, all right, and then Karen's in North London, and oh, Max, hi, Max. Um, it's nice to see you. Um, <laughs> Matthew, I think, has nailed it right. We may all end up distracted today. That is true. <laughs> Um, all right. So, um, new records to talk about, obviously question of the week to talk about, um, this week. Let's see if we managed to get that in, um, as a banner. We did not. Um, <laughs> I am on a roll this morning. So question of the week. Um, let's get that pulled up for you. Um, and see what we're talking about today. Um, I have to, actually just say again ellie has saved me this morning on organizing around all of this so the question of the week today have you found an ancestor appear unexpectedly in several record locations or record collections sorry um we want to know what their story is so unexpectedly in several record collections that may or may not feel like they kind of mesh together 
what are those stories out there? Um, and yes, this has a direct correlation to what we're going to talk about today. Um, but if you have one of those situations, let us know. I am petting this kitty as frantically as I can. She is like, ah, oh, kittens. She just can't have a bad day with a kitten, I feel like. Um, all right. <laughs> this is great okay can't get my sister to watch one of my lives but she's tuning in to see the kitten i'll show her again just for liam's sister that's because that's funny <laughs> liam's never going to hear the end of that with me uh, there she is <laughs> All right, this week's new records. I hope everybody is excited about these. Um, it is kind of the launch of our new partnership with Library Archives Canada. Technically, we published the um, 1931 census with them last June um, for Canada Day, or excuse me, July for Canada Day. Um, but um, um, this week, we really kind of are doing kind of some of the specialty titles that we have um, worked with on them. And I'm really excited about all of that, that um, the whole partnership is really incredible. Uh, and they've just been excellent to work with. So if you have not ever used Library and Archives Canada as a resource in your research, I highly recommend you go to their website, and check it out, read through all their materials, find out what they have. As an archive, they're incredible. Um, they're really working to tell the stories of Canada and its people and all of its people and it's just it, they're just really an incredible group of people and an incredible group of archivists and historians so please do make sure that you visit their site and and take a look at their resources um, because they do have stuff that might surprise you right even if your research has always been focused in the uk you just never know what's going to be sitting in those other countries especially commonwealth countries um so you know take take a look right because because you might find something interesting um so lots of people coming in with the question of the week thank you very much um and we will get to those but let me roll through um oh thanks ellie for sharing the link um so the link to like library archives canada is now in the chat appreciate that um uh, so this week's new records come directly from our partners at Library Archives Canada. What a surprise. Um, we have published two military record sets this week from Canada. And I love that we publish them together because they are exact opposites of each other. Um, the first is the Military Honors and Awards Index. And the year range on this is absolutely mind boggling, 1812 to 1969. Uh, that's a huge number of years, right? Um, so 113, just over 113,000 records. It's mostly an index, um, but some of them do have images. About 28,000 of those um, index entries have an image attached, and it is an image of the original index, so the register where it all came from. Um, so it's not a image of the, you know, like um, anything in terms of like a metal file or anything like that. Um, it's, but it, it, it is always good to have that original image. So 28,000 of them have original images um, and the rest is just an index. Um, but again, that huge year range, 1812 to 1969. And those military honors and awards really cover everything. It's everything from the most distinguished um, high level awards in the Canadian military, all the way down to kind of the, you know, the expeditionary force from World War One. that, you know, everybody got kind of the war medal. Um, so take a look at those um, because you just never know, right? Where your ancestor might've ended up in the military, of course, is a big one, especially during those time periods. 1812, of course, is, um, the start of the war with between Britain and America, part of the Napoleonic Wars in the UK, also known as the War of 1812, um, and Canada was heavily involved in that conflict um, because most of the war was on the water uh, on this side of the ocean. Um, so a big one there, and then stretching, of course, through both world wars. So um, yeah, important record set, Canadian Military Honours and Awards. The other set that we've published this week, which I said is the exact opposite um, is the index of Canadian courts marshals from the First World War. So we have medal recipients, and then we have the guys who got in trouble, um, <laughs> uh, which, you know, is just kind of a, a really interesting um, dichotomy to really work, to, to look at and work through. Um, this one is specific to World War I. It's 1914 to 1918. It's just shy of 12,000 records. It is only an index. Um, but... It is, um, uh, it is, of course, an incredible uh, collection. There's no images, 
but make sure if you use this record set that you're looking at the notes in all the entries because some of them are really detailed like some of them just say like oh he you know like oh ouch <laughs> charges of you know drinking um and you know getting in trouble for alcohol abuse that kind of thing some of them are much more detailed and intricate and really give you quite a bit of a backstory so um make sure that you read the notes section in the transcription of these records on find my past because they that's where the the juicy details are sitting um um okay so those are the two record sets this week um uh there's <laughs> heli Ellie, I don't think I could concentrate consistently enough for this uh, to appear on Friday's Live with a cat. Although Tanner, my older cat, has been on Friday's Live a number of times. He just sits down here on my desk and he's out of range of the camera. But he's every week he's almost like he's here just about every week. He's not this week because he and the kitten are not quite buddies yet. But we're working on that. Um, all right. So those are the two record sets. Now. The question of the week is a good one, and let me repeat it. Have you found an ancestor appear unexpectedly in several record locations or collections? I keep saying locations. And what's their story? So one of the reasons that we're asking this question is because of the story that we found in this week's records. Um, now, this is a story that has been told before, but it's actually really cool. So. Um, there was a gentleman um, who served with the Canadian Expeditionary Force in World War One. He was, um, he his name was Claude Nooney, um, and he ended the war as a private. Um, and what we realized actually is that he um, he's actually born in Hastings in England. Um, at 13 years old, he was transported to Canada as a home children, which if you remember, we talked about back in September um, and kind of explored some of that history. So uh, very interesting and somewhat tragic part of Canadian and UK history. Oh my gosh, she's going to rip my shirt off. <laughs> um, so he's a home child who gets sent over to Canada. Um, he and his brother, actually. Um, and they were sent by the Catholic Immigration Association. So as he um, grows up in Canada, he joins the forces. Um, he served as a machine gunner with Canada's 38th Battalion. And yes, I'm reading off notes, sorry. Um, they were also known as the Cameron Highlanders of Ottawa. Um, and his heroism was well-documented. This man had no fear. Um, he would just jump into everything. He single-handedly halted an attack of 200 men um, during the fight of, on Vimy Ridge. Um, he was awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal. He earned the military medal two months after that um, when he rescues an injured soldier, um, kind of putting his own life at risk and kind of getting this man back into the trenches. So he's in the awards, like the military medals and awards list a couple of times receiving these really prestigious, really high end um, military medals. Right. Unfortunately, he's also in the court martial index. Um, he was found guilty of striking a superior officer in April of 1918, and he was sentenced to a year's imprisonment in England. Um, and likely his sentence would have been much harsher if he hadn't already done those big heroic things. So he is awaiting transport across the English Channel from Europe into England to um, kind of sit, you know, sit through his year of punishment. Um, and he comes, they come across um, this shot down German plane and they make this attempt to recover information from this plane, from the pilot and the observer inside the plane. Um, and he ends up trying to save these two Germans from this burning wreck of this plane, right? So in response to this, again, heroic act, they commute his sentence and instead he's demoted down to private at this point. Um, and he would go on to fight one more major battle in September of 1918. And unfortunately he died as a result of the injuries from that battle on the 23rd of September, 1918. He was posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross, which is the military's highest honor. So here is this incredible man who is born in England, is sent to Canada as a home child, is, um, <laughs> I'm getting distracted by comments. Is it, you know, joins the Canadian Expeditionary Force, has these incredible moments of heroism and and just abandoning all sense of his own life and doing whatever it took for his his comrades in arms, if you will. Um, and then ends up getting kind of in a, a little bit of an argument, it sounds like. We're not really sure why he assaulted or slapped, I think, his commanding officer. Um, but that's what ends up happening. 
gets court-martialed, sentenced to a year's imprisonment, ends up doing another heroic act, and then dies in battle a few months later. Like, what an incredible story. And this is where the question of the week came from. What collections have you found the same ancestor in that kind of blew your mind, right? What what things have going together are going together that don't seem to go together? Um, Claude Nooney's story really, really shows us that it is worth looking. Oh, she's trying to get into my coffee now. No coffee for you, little Eva. It's worth looking at everything that applies to the time frame of your ancestor, right? Even if you think that that would never happen. Like my ancestor was a decorated war hero. Of course, he's not in the courts martial index. You just never know how you're gonna your ancestors are gonna show up and and what kind of decisions they made in life and what those ramifications of those decisions were. And I it just yeah, incredible story. Um, it is available. Like if if you go to the blog, which um, Ellie has shared the link in the comments um, to kind of our write-up of the story. Um, but there's also more on the Wikipedia page. He has a Wikipedia page. This man has been pretty well studied um, and he's pretty interesting. I'm going to hold her now because she's just trying to climb. She just wants to go high up. <laughs> she's so cute. Um, so yeah, incredible piece of work, right? Um, and shout out to our colleague, Charlotte, for discovering this story in our records this week um, and, and making sure that all of us were aware of Claude Nooney and his amazing story and this incredible journey through historical records. Um, so yeah, big story this week. Uh, read the blog, check out the Wikipedia page. Even if you're not interested in Canadian records, right? It just, it's, it's just such an incredible story. It's, it's really, really amazing. Um, okay. So that is this week's records and a cool story. Let's go back to what else we published this week, which of course, is our newspapers. Um, and let me make sure I've got the right tab pulled up so I can remember the list. Um, there are locations in this week's newspapers that I cannot pronounce. So um, we did, though, do a big release to mark, of course, St. Andrew's Day. She's so excited about these newspapers. Are you guys seeing this? She is absolutely a genealogy cat. Like she was born for this. She's so excited. Marking St. Andrew's Day, we added a brand new Scottish title this week, Scotland on Sunday. And this has pages from 1988 to 2002. Um, the newspaper was founded in Edinburgh in 1988 as the sister paper of the Scotsman. Um, and so um, it's relatively recent, right? So it's got lots of cool pictures in it, lots of really interesting kind of modern day pieces. Um, and um, and a wonderful title in terms of, you know, kind of modern day Scottish research. But, um, you know, find your yourself, your parents, your siblings, your aunts and uncles are going to be all over this paper. It's really it's a fun one to play around with. Um, so make sure that you take a look at that. So that that title is Scotland on Sunday. Um, and of course, you can access the links directly from the blog um, on Find My Past or on the British Newspaper Archive, whichever site you prefer. Um, we also added um, the Kidderminster Shuttle. Pretty sure I said that right. Um, that's from Worcestershire in uh, 1870. Um, so it takes its name from the carpet weaving industry, right? The shuttle with part of the apparatus for um, weaving. Um, it was originally sold every Saturday for the price of one penny. Um, and um, every issue is um, or it averages eight pages. Um, so local, national, and international news, you'll find a bit of everything in here. Um, and then, of course, general interest topics as well. Um, it's also, of course, focused on the local carpet trade. So if you happen to have someone in that area of the world um, who was involved in that industry, it's definitely a title you'll want to look at. Um, in addition to those, we added material to 16 different titles in the newspaper collection. Um, so I'm not going to go through them all, but again, the list is on the blog. A couple of highlights. Um, let's see, the Croydon Post from 97, 1997 and 1998. The Football Post from Nottingham in 1999. Um, lots of modern stuff this week, which is really cool. That's always fun and exciting. Um, in fact, most of it is modern. Um, what else we got? Oh, and the Protestant Vanguard, which is one I really want to dig into. That actually is from 1933 to 1934. Uh, look, Ava, Ava, dad just came in. You can go play with him. Um, <laughs> I think we're 
we might be done with the kitty for a little bit. Uh, all right. So um, if you have a um, Protestant in your family or if you have a dissenter, the Protestant Vanguard title might be a good one for you. Um, again, 1933 to 34. So lots of great stuff um, um, coming in from newspapers this week. Those two main titles, Scotland on Sunday and then the Kidderminster Shuttle. Kidderminster. Um, and then an additional 16 titles were added to this week from the fantastic newspaper team. Um, and we hope that you enjoy them. Um, all sorts of good stuff in there. Now, remember, for those of you who um, are used to using the newspaper search on British Newspaper Archive, the newspaper experience on Find My Past has been changed dramatically. Um, and, and I find it really exciting. So make sure that you're playing around on both sites to get the most out of out of both. Um, it's really, really good. The new newspaper search is really good. Okay. All right. That's all the new records. And that is the kitten. I hope. I'm not sure where she ended up. She's roaming around somewhere. So we'll see. Let's then turn to um, question of the week stories. Um, and I'm going to scroll back up. Let's put this on the screen for just a second. Question of the week. Have you found an ancestor appear unexpectedly in several record collections like we did with um, Private Claude Nooney um, from World War I? Um, and um, let's start with, I think the first one came across with Lloyd, actually. So he says, um, his best example is my fourth great-great-grandfather sources in, oh, wow, look at this list. Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Germany, Sweden, Norway, Holland, Ireland, England, St. Kitts, Caraco, um, Tobago, Barbados, Switzerland, and more. That's all one person? Because that's cool. <laughs> that's really cool. I, have, I mean, you know, I think many of us have immigrant ancestors that you'll find in, you know, a handful of countries, but that's a huge list. Military? Military, maybe? Um, business traveler? like something to do with occupation i'm trying to figure i'm trying to in my brain i'm i'm quickly trying to find scenarios where you would have one person hitting all those countries that's really amazing lloyd i would love to see that written up at some point uh and shared like maybe on our blog <laughs> like or something somewhere where i can read it if you have a link to anything that you've done that would be so so fun to read um oh and he forgot england yeah, of course. <laughs> and Russia. <laughs> They're just like coming in as a trickle. Um, incredible story. Sounds like a really incredible story. Thanks for sharing that. Um, mm -hmm. um, Mags with the question of the week coming. My great grandmother changed the family ma name and moved to a different city. So yeah, you're going to have a lot of, um, of records there that kind of maybe don't go together, but kind of do go together. Yeah, definitely a lot of opportunity there for sure. Karen found second cousin three times removed in prison records and newspapers because of bigamy three times and fraud. That's always a fun one, isn't it? Right? That's that's a delightful one to kind of uncover in your family tree. Um, <laughs> she says sarcastically, right? Um, yeah, that... I, I can see how all of those are, are kind of intertwined and like you kind of go naturally might go from prison to newspaper and, and fraud and all of that. Um, I wonder if you could find him in anything that reads as complimentary um, as well and kind of just get that opposite perspective of his life. Um, yeah, always good. Oh, Lloyd, I apologize. You had a revised answer and I, I shared the first one and not the second one. So let's just do that one again. Fourth great-great-grandfather sources in Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Germany, Sweden, Norway, Holland, Ireland, England, St. Kitts, Kirka, Tobacco, Barbados, Switzerland, England, Russia, India, and Canada. Yeah, he's a busy guy. I feel like he's a really busy guy. Um, <laughs> Anya, I need this t-shirt. T-shirt that says all you need is tea, books, and a cat. That is, that's so true. It's, it's really true. I'm going to add my coffee in the morning, but after that, it's tea. Um, Daphne, her question of the week response. I had a, a great grandfather, 
um, at some point, Cameron, who popped up on several records on further investigation over several months, it turns out they weren't at all related. Yeah, how many times have we all done that? Um, my maiden name is Brown. And so mm -hmm, lots of duplication, lots. At one point, I was just absolutely confident that I had found my Brown, Brown family in um, um, very early Massachusetts, like, you know, 1600s. And I shared notes with another researcher who'd been working on that area and, and the Brown families in that area. And he was like, actually, no, I've already proven this is completely incorrect. And he just sent me this whole lot of stuff. And I was like, ah, okay, starting over. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I have a kitty cat at my feet. Oh, she's so cute. I, oh, I'm totally off screen. Sorry. Uh, I didn't realize. Um, I was going to try and pick her up, but um, I think she might be too too far away. Um, Kim. Oh, oops. There we go. Uh, not so much an ancestor, but a cousin of my great grandmother. Reginald Hansen appeared in business directories, court documents, and newspapers. He was knighted by Queen Victoria and was the Lord Mayor of London in 1886. Well, he's going to be all over the place then. Um, and I'm guessing there's going to be some controversial stuff in there, right? Because that's what happens with people like that. Um, business directories, court documents, and newspapers. Court records are so fun for me. I like them a lot. Um, and because you can find people that you're interested in as, as victims of crime, as criminals, as witnesses, I, I, sometimes as jurors, depending on what period and what time country you're looking at, like court records are so good. Um, we should all spend more time in court records, starting with me. Um, oh gosh, Ava Fridays. <laughs> Maybe, um, maybe I will, you know what? I will try to negotiate a contract between Ava and find my past and see, see what we can do. <laughs> um, oh, I keep hitting the button too many times. Sorry about that. My grandfather, Daphne continues, Donald Cameron was in the first battalion CEF. So, um, kind of correlating with our story today from the records from Canada, machine gunned in both legs of, and gassed in the casualty clearing station. And he survived. That's intense. Okay. That's intense. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, hide the current comment. There we go. Um, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Max, this is also a kitty wrestling talk. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Um, Gordon telling us on the question of the week, I found my two times great uncle died in Barhead, Alberta, along with his family, mostly in Titchfield, Saskatchewan, thought they were all in Yorkshire and they came across in 1911. You know, I was actually just talking to Liam yesterday about why his ancestor may have suddenly just up and left Scotland and, and, and gone to Canada. Um, and there's, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, I would be interested, Gordon, to see what your research has unveiled. I'm always intrigued by that immigrant story because there's so many motivations for that decision to be made. Um, and every time I hear about something, it, it feels like it's kind of a new thing. Now there's some general trends, right? There's the opportunity for land and the opportunity for, um, you know, kind of making more money and having a better life and like, you know, giving, giving your children a better environment or getting out of the slums and the cities and, and getting into the countryside, doing farming or agricultural work. Um, there's migration schemes that happen, especially from the UK out into the Dominion or the, the Commonwealth countries, all really, really interesting stuff. Um, but I'd be curious, Gordon, if you have uncovered a, a motivation for their immigration. Um, <laughs> yeah, Liam, I think you're right. Ava was a big fan of that St. Andrew's Day stuff and, and the Scottish papers. So we know where her heart sits um, when it comes to our heritage. Um, all right. Anya. Oh, um, where'd it go? When you had a, a big one there. No, that's Victoria's. Hang on. There we go. All right. Anya, I still have to confirm. Okay. Fair enough. But besides BMDs for one ancestor, he and his wife are mentioned in a book written about the town he came from years later for his attempts to hide money from his wife to go drinking. But the money keeps being stolen by his children. <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. Um, I think he's also one of the men named for illegal combination in a coal mine in 1817 with many other workers at the time. I need to get a hold of that record. Um, Anya, you have some of the best stories I've ever heard. Like, <laughs> this is good. Um, I love that it keeps getting stolen by his children. It's like trying to hide a Christmas present 
and then they keep finding it. Like that's, that's hilarious. That's really funny. I love that. Um, poor wife. I hope the children were like <laughs> informing her. <laughs> um, oh, but she says, hopefully not from drinking urn brew. All right. <laughs> it used to make me hyper with all the food colorings. Yeah, that stuff. If you've never had that stuff, that orange stuff, it's, it's a once in a lifetime experience. Um, or maybe multiple times in a life, if you like it. For me, it was a one-time deal, I think. Um, oh, Jean was a little bit late, and she says, hi. Hi. Always good to have you, Jean. Thanks. Um, Victoria's question of the week. Another another good, meaty one. Three times great-grandfather found in Bristol baptisms. Daughter baptized there, although born and lived in London. Old Bailey records found with property stolen from a shop, a tobacconist. Okay. Unbeknownst to me, he was a teacher. Interesting. Newspapers um, include adverts, adverts for the book he wrote. I didn't know he was an author as well. That is a lot of different occupations, like very unrelated. That's really interesting. Commonwealth War Graves Commission, a reference. He was an officer Napoleon mentioned. Yet this was mentioned on a grandson's memorial. Okay. Wow, that's a lot to unpack. Um, so location-wise, we have two different regions completely. Um, we've got three different occupations. We've got him as an officer that Napoleon talked about, but not referenced until two generations later. Um, I wonder what, the, gosh, the family oral history on that Napoleon piece must be, must have been huge and like prominent, right? For that to be taken all the way down to the grandson. Uh, well, gosh, that's a good one, Victoria. Yeah. You guys have Good stuff. <laughs> Linda, that's funny. If you disappear off screen, we know she's chewed a cable. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, uh, Matthew posted a question there. I'm gonna, I'll get back to that, Matthew. Um, but don't let me forget. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little star thing so it will remind me. Um, all right, Gordon um, contributes again. I found my aunt's husband, father born in Hamilton, Ontario. His father, David Thomas Milne, was a Lieutenant Major 1st Battalion Prince Consort's own rifle brigade. That is a long, long thing to say. 12th of February, 1866. Hmm. 1866. So it kind of went, well, no, I thought, oh, interesting. All right. I am not as familiar with the Canadian military um, in between the War of 1812 and maybe the turn of the century. So that's a period I haven't really worked on very much. Um, I have someone who came to Canada on a military pension where he got pensioned out with land. Um, but that was early eight, like 1830s. Um, and then I've done, I've done a decent amount with the, like the war of 1812 and just the history of that and understanding how that all played out. Um, but I haven't really done kind of that middle of the century period. So that's something for me to read up on. Um, I like that, Gordon. Thanks. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to learn a bit more, which is why I do these sessions, because I learn from you guys every week. It's great. Um, <laughs> um, lots of kitty comments, which I appreciate. Um, Rosie says, just wait when the kitty claims the keyboard and you're not looking and sends a sentence of letters to the Find My Pass forum. The mods recognize it really isn't you. I hope the mods <laughs> will recognize that because sometimes I wonder if they're like, is she okay? <laughs> um, um, great. Kim has a great idea. This is a good suggestion for others as well. Um, so thanks for sharing this, Kim. I made my own document record from when my great grandfather changed his identity compiled with DNA match results. That's fantastic. Like, I mean, ob yes, 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 yes. We have to document, 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 document. How did we get to the, the answer? How did we create the hypothesis? How did we prove it was true or, un or untrue? Um, document, document, document. So that the people who come behind us um, know what's happening. Oh, Andrew doing his own call out to Library and Archives Canada, which is great. Um, thanks to them. He found a distant cousin from Lancashire signing up for the Great War in Winnipeg. There's always more to that immigration story, Andrew. So definitely worth um, continuing on with that if you haven't. Um, Karen has a dodgy cousin who was out and out rogue, born in India and apprenticed in Merchant Navy Records as well, um, died when he ran over the Westminster Bridge. Okay, <laughs> that's, hmm, that took a turn, didn't it? Um, fantastic, right. Um, good research there, I would think, Karen. And Lloyd um, left his comment 
um, but lost internet signal because he is joining us from a cruise and a summer visit to the Baltic. Hmm. Lloyd <laughs> from a cruise. I think that that's definitely a first for me. We'll have to kind of reconvene as a team inside the Find My Past Friday host and see if um, if you're the first person to comment and join a live stream um, from the middle of the ocean. Um, I know I have logged in from the air, like I've watched from an airplane before, um, but from a cruise, that might be a new one. I love it. Um, <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> um, I'm ah, still scrolling. Okay, hang on, uh, let's see. Oh, Ellie did share a link to the advanced search on the newspapers. Give it a shot. See what you think. Let us know. Play around with it. Um, some of the features are not necessarily intuitive because they're new and like we haven't seen them before on a genealogy like search product. Um, so read the information and the little help bits that pop up um, if if you want to play around really, you know, with good intent. Um, yeah. Um, oh, and Shirley, I don't know if this um, showed up in the chat, but um, we had a, a comment earlier. I want to say it was from Anya, but I might be wrong about that. Um, she's asking what is combination and Shirley is over on our YouTube chat. chat so if um, people want to respond to that and let her know, I'm going to keep scrolling through question of the week. If we have time, we'll, we'll come back to that, Shirley. But in the meantime, um, for those of you who are aware of combination, check out the chat over on YouTube as well and see if you can help her out with that. Um, Rita as or added to the conversation, my grandfather's family moved from Philadelphia in Pennsylvania to Camden, New Jersey, then married and back to Philadelphia and later in life moved back to New Jersey again to live with his girlfriend. Quite a few different records has to figure this out. Yeah, I bet that's a lot of back and forth. Now those two places are not really that far apart, but for those of you who are unfamiliar with American research, that's a lot of moving around in terms of record collections. Um, just going over state lines means learning a whole new way of organizing records, historical access, um, what you can see, what you can't. And then the counties inside each state have many, often have different rules as well. So well done, Rita, for continuing to pursue that and, and moving back and forth like that. That, that takes some real tenacity. Um, and it doesn't really matter what time frame you're talking about. In anywhere in the U.S., going back and forth like that is, gets a little tricky. Um, Christine also throwing in some U.S. stuff. Let's see. My great aunt from Cornwall listing in her U.S. naturalization. She was, act oh, but she was actually born in the U.S., but her parents came back to Cornwall and she married a man from Cornwall, so she lost her U.S. citizenship. Yep, that's how it works. Um Again, depending on the time frame and depending on the rules and laws in place. Um, but that's another, that's a great example. Um, I love this because this is a, uh, you know, all of us kind of taking these records and going, well, yeah, of course it's true. It's on an official government document, but actually, no, let's take that with a grain of salt and make sure that we prove all of the information that we're pulling and extracting from those records. Um, so um, uh, that's a that's a fantastic one. Christine, I like that one. She's actually born... Yeah, I had a case um, last year, I feel like, maybe a little bit longer than that, where this um, this uh, young man was born in, shoot, Sunderland, I think, in, in England, um, and then ends up in the U.S. Navy. Um, and it took me forever to actually find a document that said, yes, I was born in England and not in the United States, because he had claimed United States birth for forever, because... Otherwise, he wouldn't have been eligible to serve in the U.S. Navy, but he had a really long career there. And for the longest time, I was like, these are two different men who have the exact same name and the exact same birth date, but are, date, but are born in two different countries. Like it, 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 Because that wasn't allowed in the United States at that point. Um, and it wasn't until, I think, the 1950 U.S. Census that it fi he finally says, I was born in England. And I still ask myself, I still wonder about him because he would have immigrated to the U.S. relatively quick, like soon, right before he joined the Navy. So he immigrates to the U.S. as a, an, a young man. He would have had an accent. So how do you convince your superior officers in the Navy that you're born in the U.S., but you have this heavy U.K. accent? Like, I, it had to have been quite a story. I ended up get a, ordering his full Navy file 
And he's got this story in there about how he was born in the U.S., but as a young child, like a toddler-ish, his mom took him back to England and he was raised there and then he came back to the U.S., but he was actually born in England. So, yeah, really interesting, like back and forth there. Um, it was a, it was a fun story to work on. Christine, I imagine yours was as well. Um, okay. Um, Victoria, adding to her story, desperate to find proof of the Napoleon link and learn and more about the tobacconist piece. So in the chat, if anybody has suggestions for her, please feel like, you know, throw them out there. Um, he was classified as foreign in the 1840 census. It, um, what country? Um, so we do not know his nationality, presume French, but are you, what country was he in for the 1840 census? Is that U.S.? Um, if you have comments to feed into, into Victoria, please see her in the chat. Um, will I do Ava's family tree maybe with DNA? I'm gonna be honest, probably not. <laughs> um, you know what, I think um, maybe someday, but we I've never done that with any of my pets. Um, they are, we always adopt from a shelter and, um, and I kind of appreciate the mystery of it, right? Like, I don't know, maybe, maybe someday, I don't know. Um, all right, Anya, since we're discussing Canada, which of course we are today, an ancestor who was born in Scotland, immigrated to Canada, married a Scotsman over there, didn't know why I couldn't find their marriage in Scotland. Their daughter's baptism in Scotland mentioned she was born in New York once they immigrated back. Oh, so this family's all over the place, actually. So Scotland to Canada, and then to the United States, and then back to Scotland. That's a fun one. I love those. I love those little puzzles. Global puzzles. Oh, Linda has joined Find My Past Before from a ferry. Yeah, I think that counts. I mean, it's like on a body of water. I think maybe maybe we need to track like how many miles you are from land. It would be good to know. A ferry obviously is going to be relatively close in, right, to the shore. But a cruise could be anywhere. So two distinctions, I think, to make there. Like, so, for example, I joined from an airplane. I, th I, th I would call that different than joining from a helicopter. If anybody ever does that, you should let us know. Um um hoo, hoo, hoo. oh and we have someone new it looks like in youtube um who lives in canada a lot of irish and my father's mother is from newcastle and finally made it to a live well welcome um we're happy to have you with us scorpion and also i really like your your username <laughs> that's cool um right okay um, we've got some answers in the chat to the combination question. So thank you very much. I'm going to put these on the screen because they're answering on Facebook and the question came from YouTube. Um, so a legal combination was basically they went on strike, but they weren't allowed to strike as there were no unions back then for the coal miners. Um, and then the secondary comment is pre-trade unions. And, and that's exactly right. Um, so thanks both of you for adding your comments there. Um, do, do, do. Okay, let's see. I'm just going back through to see if there is any. Um, oh, this uh, Karen's joined from a train several times and from Malaysia in the middle of the night. Okay, so we need to start a list, actually. Ellie, Liam, um, if we could start collating these, I think um, I think that's pretty good. Um, Ellie is a fan. She thinks Karen wins. I don't know. I still think the cruise is pretty cool. Um, but Malaysia in the middle of the night is pretty good. So I don't know. I, know, we, I think we just need a list. I think we just need to start documenting. Do we have citations for all of these, Ellie? <laughs> Ellie and I have been talking about citations this week and last week. Um, and, and she's practicing and getting better and it's great and it's fantastic. I'm turning her into a genealogist. Uh, all right. Um, there was a question that I wanted to go back to. Yeah, Matthew. Um, on the subject of newspapers, is there a way on Find My Past to look for an exact name? And the answer is, Yes, yes, there is. Um, so I'm gonna try and pull it up. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to share a screen, but I can at least talk through it. So give me just a second as I look at this. But if you go to the newspaper search on Find My Past, and um, you can do it in the kind of the main search box. Hang on, I'm trying to get this to load properly here. Um, okay, hang on. Um, let me see if this is going to work. My autofill might um, might mess me up a little bit here. Um, so let me pull up newspapers really quick. There we go. Okay. So this is the main, like the standard search page for newspapers now. 
Um, again, if you haven't seen it, lots of changes recently, but very exciting ones. Um, let me drop that so you can see the whole screen. Um, I mentioned earlier, there's lots of tips and tricks and like content that you can look at to guide you. All of that is really down here. So if you haven't used it yet, read through this material, watch our videos. We've done a couple video sessions now on this. Um, it's certainly worth your time to read through this because some of these features are, are really new and innovative to the newspaper, historic newspaper experience just as a whole. Um, okay, so the question is, is there a way to search for an exact name? Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. So in this keyword box, um, and my autofill is filling up, unfortunately, um, if you use the name here and you click on exact keyword search, it will do it that way. Um, you can do, um, I don't know, Matthew Donovan, right? Um, and it will, if you check the box, um, it will do that. You can also access um, through the advanced search page. So there we go, that loads. Okay, so you have an option to put names in the top box here, which is the same as on that previous screen, just on the main page. Um, if you scroll down, you can click the search for exact words and phase, phrases only here as well. Uh, you can also kind of do it in the phrase flexibility, right? So if you put in a name, um, I'm just gonna make this up, okay? So Janet Smith. Um, you put that in the phrase and actually you don't even need the quotations actually i don't know why i did that did it that way if you move this down to zero it will look for the words janet and smith as a phrase instead of a name which sometimes is useful um so if you put it down to zero it's looking for janet and smith right next to each other with no other words in between if you put it at a one okay you might get search results that are janet Sarah Smith. You might get Mrs. Janet Smith. You might get um, uh, Mrs. William Janet Smith, right? Well, that's two words, actually. Um, so if you adjust up to two, then you get, there we go, a little slider. Um, then you might get Mrs. Janet Husband Smith um, or Janet Wife of Smith. Um, so as you adjust these kind of uh, phrase flexibility sliders, that word count is it's it's written here that changes as you go. And I have found this actually to be quite good, especially when looking for the female situation and looking for a Mrs. Henry Timberlake. Right. Um, or Mrs. John Smith, um, something like that. Um, so you can you can play around with names in a couple of different ways. Um, I've also played around with um, the the prioritize box here. Um, so if I'm looking for right Janet Smith um, as a name, oops, like that, and then prioritize results that also include William, right? Um, and and so this the word count filter is gone. I can do exact words and phrases. I've got twenty eight thousand six hundred results. I click on exact. Uh, still the same number. Um, and then you start to filter down to location and time frame and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's, so hopefully that answers your question, Matthew. There's a couple of different ways to approach this. Use the name box, use the keyword box, use this phrase search. This thing is cool, you guys. This thing is super powerful. I am finding more and more and more as I get better and better at these search um, kind of variations. And then don't forget that there's this option to search for exact words and phrases only. So a couple of different ways to approach that question, um, Matthew, but hopefully that um, hopefully that answers that and gives you some kind of some good food for thought as to how to play around. And really, I, I personal, I mean, gosh, I, I have known about these features being built and such in the background, um, day to day job, right for a long time. But um, it's not really until you it's live and you get the chance to play around with it that you really start to understand those little nuances and those kind of little journeys and paths that you can do um, to really kind of make the search really successful for you. So play around with it, spend some time. Um, that's my biggest suggestion to anybody um, is really, uh, no matter what the, the topic is, whether it's newspapers or you know some other record group or something, um, you know, spend some time with that material and try and play around and see what what changes as you work through it. Um, okay. 
And then um, looks like he is actually doing some of that now. So Matthew says, as a follow-up, just did it with keyword search with William Baverstock as an exact match, but it's returning things like William Thomas William and William John. Can you refine it? And the answer to that is in that phrase flex. Um, and that should work. So, and Ellie made this comment. So thanks for that, Ellie. Um, put it into the phrase flex search box and take it down to zero. And that should work for you. So hopefully... Um, Hopefully that works, but again, continue to play around. It's really cool. Um, all right. Uh, one more comment here. Let's see. Find my past. Um, oh, um, third time's great grandmother from Susan appears in the 1861 census for Ontario, but in three different households. Oh, that's cool. Uh, he was a circuit minister with a huge territory and seemed to be accounted by three different census takers. That's great. Right. Because, and it's and it's a great lesson to, to have, especially when we're talking about Canadian records or other Commonwealth countries. Right. In the UK, we're so accustomed to like 1911 and 1921. They happened in one night. Um, and, and that was the law. That's the way they, they they performed the census and they executed on the census. But in other countries and even in previous years in the UK, they, it took in some cases months to conduct a census, a national census. So it's important to keep that that context in mind and know about the collection that you're utilizing in your research so that you understand those parameters and understand those exceptions. Um, really good. Okay, cool. That's a great one, Susan. Thanks. Um, okay, I think that got, oh, oh, uh oh, we're back to transportation. Matthew watched on a bus once. So that's another one for the list, if we could please make, make a note of that. Um, oh, hi, we have Ava. She's back. Hi, little girl. I'm going to scoop her up because we're almost done. Come here. Oh, <laughs> and we'll bring Ava back for just a few more last minutes. Um, <laughs> Kim wants to know if we've had anybody from space or in a submarine. We could nearly call bingo. I love it. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, I agree. I think if we could get someone from a submarine or from space, I think that would probably be the winner, to be honest. But in the meantime, we'll just keep tracking records. Look at that face. She's so cute. Um, all right. I think, um, let's see. Ava on one and Panda on another. I think that Ava and Panda should be, um, um, in a call together, right? I mean, the magic of, of, of internet. Yeah. So good. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Ava, let's just bring all the find my pets onto a find my past live. That's uh, we should do that. Ellie, write that down. Oh, because we have a whole channel in at find my past. So we talk about our pets all the time. Um, that was right in my shoulder. All right. I think um, that we've had a really good hour together and, and everybody's gotten a chance to meet Ava, which is really great. She's so sweet. Um, thank you all for welcoming her and, and being accommodating um, on having a kitten on the session today. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, Victoria, her coloring reminds me of the judge that went viral talking as a cat. You guys remember that? He like said his Zoom wrong and he ended up being a talking cat. Um, that was really funny. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, all right. I think we've had a good session. And again, thank you for your tolerance of the, the kitten. Um, have a great weekend. Uh, we have a, a lot coming up. It's it's December. It's the holidays. There's a huge opportunity for all of us to capture more stories and photographs and family traditions and document um, our ancestors in ways that don't often come up across the calendar year, right? Um, so some of us don't get our families together all that regularly. So the holidays are really special for that. Um, really appreciate you spending some time with us, but make sure as you are thinking about the holidays and your plans, um, as you celebrate, however you celebrate, um, think about capturing those memories and sharing them and putting them on your Find My Past tree and, um, and making sure that you record that. We've talked about citations today, so get those citations in. Make sure that you're documenting and, and saving those very, very important memories um, from today's celebrations, but celebrations past as well. Um, right, so thank you all very much. Have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you next week. Enjoy researching through those new Canadian records and the new newspapers. Have a great afternoon or evening, wherever you are.